So in the camera community, it has been a crazy year. So many people have been releasing cameras. Sony and Canon are kind of like the main topics of conversation right now, but you also have Panasonic, you have Fuji, you have Blackmagic. There's just so many things that we can obtain to create such amazing content. But there's one group of people that I've been constantly seeing on these different YouTube videos saying things like, man, I, I really wish I could afford this camera or too bad, this is way outside of my price range. And it seems really negative and discouraging. So being the person I am, a person who likes to be frugal, who likes to save money, I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk to you guys about how to save money on camera gear. So let's get right into it. Now, usually when you hear these two terms used and refurbished, you get a little worried, you get a little scared. You're like, no, I want something brand new. I don't wanna have any issues with it. But I think a lot of people really don't understand what refurbished is. When you get something refurbished, that usually means that it was lightly used or it was something on demo or display. And then on top of that, usually before they sell it to you, everything is hand inspected. So in some ways, refurbished can actually mean better than buying something brand new because a person is actually putting this camera or this gear in their hands and they're looking at it very closely to make sure it works properly. When I bought my Canon 80D, I bought it from Canon um, and I bought it refurbished and I saved over $100 on my purchase. Also, most companies offer a warranty that comes with the refurbished gear, so don't be afraid to buy it, read the warranty, and um, give it a try. So the other thing is used gear. I haven't bought a lot of used gear, but I've definitely bought used gear, and um, I recommend buying it from B&H, although there's some other great places you can get, get used gear from. Places like B&H and even Adorama, they break down the gradings of the gear from something that's been gently used to something that's like there's broken parts and they let you know up front. They also offer, uh, I believe, a 90 day parts and labor warranty as well as a 30 day return policy. And look, if you're uncomfortable buying cameras or lenses or uh, any anything that's super expensive used, you can still buy stands, tripods, lights, mics, other things like that used. So don't be afraid to buy used and refurbished gear. Give it a try. It's worked out for me. I haven't had any issues and I know other friends who haven't had any issues as well. But one of the lights that are most talked about, especially on YouTube, the Aperture 120D. I can't afford that. You know what I use? I use the Godox lights, the SL60 watt. Now, are they as good as the Aperture 120D Mark II lights? Absolutely not, but I'm using them right now and they work for what I need. They work for my uses. So you don't have to buy the top of the line, brand name, most popular things. Lenses are the same way. You have Tamron lenses or Sigma lenses that are great lenses. You can buy the third party lenses and you will still create great results. I've shot weddings on both the Tamron and Sigma lenses. So remember to do research, see what options that you have out there and you can make a lot of things work that aren't necessarily the best version of things. I can't tell you how much I rent gear and it works out perfectly for me. When you rent gear, you're able to get your hands on things that are worth thousands and thousands of dollars for less than a hundred bucks or sometimes around a hundred bucks. Two sites that I rent from all the time are Borrow Lenses and Lens Rental. Now, I personally prefer Borrow Lenses. I did a entire review on it. You can check it up up here um, where I just explain how the process works, why I like them, pros and cons. Um, so yeah, give that a watch. But another way to save on renting gear is to search your local area to see if there are any rental companies around and you can save some money on shipping by going and picking up the gear. There's one near me uh, called Aperture Rent. Now, if you don't wanna deal with a rental company or if you want prices that may be a little cheaper than going with a rental company, you can check your local area for other freelancers 
that are renting their gear out. Now there's a website, I've never done this before, but there's a website called ShareGrid, I believe. And it's a place where you can go onto their website, you can search your area, and you can see what freelancers are offering as far as gear and prices. So yeah, I'm a big fan of renting gear. I'm doing it this weekend actually, because I have some client work I'm doing. So yeah. I mean, this is like the cheapest way to get your hands on, on needed gear without having to spend any money. And if you don't have any friends that are videographers or photographers, that's a reason to collaborate. Now, I'm not saying just collaborate to scheme on people so you can get you know, access to their equipment, but if you, if you find people that you connect with and you build genuine relationships, it'll be a natural thing and you can borrow gear from other people. I do it all the time. It's a lifesaver, it's a money saver, and it's a lot less stressful than renting. <laughs> now, this next thing is super practical Practical, but I feel like it's I feel like it's really really overlooked especially with these new cameras coming out You don't need the latest and the greatest gear in order to create good art if you have a camera that doesn't shoot 4k at 120 frames a second you can still tell your story shooting in full HD 1080 at 60 frames gear and specs are exciting They're great. I get hype about it myself but they're not gonna make you a better content creator. They're just not, that's not how it works. You become a good content creator because you become a better storyteller. Also, when new cameras come out, you have to know that the models, the previous models usually go down in price. So it's a, it's a good idea to wait till the new stuff comes out so that you can wait and get the camera that came up before because that camera is still a good, it's a great tool for you to create content, for you to tell a story, for you to film client work. Also, it's okay to slow down and buy things one at a time. I know sometimes you watch your favorite filmmaker, your favorite YouTuber, your favorite uh, director, and you're looking at all the tools they have access to, and you're like, how do I get those lights? How do I get that gimbal? How do I get that camera? Slow down, buy one thing at a time. A lot of the times when you try to buy everything at once, you end up not even using everything. It will save you a lot of heartache, a lot of stress. You'll save money. So speaking of money, it kind of goes in hand with buying what you can afford. Save money from client work. Save money from a part-time job that you might get so that you can obtain the gear that you want to obtain. Sell things that you don't need. Facebook Marketplace is a great place to sell. I have friends who sell stuff on there all the time. I've sold things on there. Also, wait for holidays. Wait for things to go on sale. Wait for days like Black Friday, Prime Day, Cyber Monday. Those are great times to buy gear because things are gonna be discounted, um, especially things that aren't the latest and the greatest. So if a camera comes out in 2020, look at what came out in 2019 and buy that. I would recommend that you really evaluate if the camera you want is actually the camera you need. That's important. And my last bit of advice, you might hate this including your cell phone. People are doing such amazing things with cell phones these days, and cell phones have come such a long way. There's even a Netflix movie. There's a movie on Netflix that was filmed entirely on an iPhone. People have won awards for short films filmed on phones. Take your phone, sit in front of some natural light, buy a $60 mic, you literally have a YouTube setup right then and there. Not the most convenient, not the most ideal, but now, now you're in a position where you can create the content that you wanna create. And as you grow, as you get better, as you learn things, as you earn some more money, you can actually get the gear or you can figure out, I don't even need that. I can make this work with this thing that's even cheaper. So yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say. I just kind of want to put something out there that wasn't saying, you got to get these new cameras, you got to hurry up and buy this, you got to buy that. And just to put something practical out here to say, look, 
you don't have to spend all your money to have access to this gear. You can spend some money, you can save money, you can spend less money, you can wait, be patient. There's a lot of different options you can rent. So the next time you get the urge to buy something, I recommend you stop, think, do I really need this thing? And what's the cheapest way to get it? So I really hope that this was helpful to someone out there, whether it was a beginner filmmaker, a YouTuber, or, or just anyone. And um, if it was, make sure you give this video a like, make sure you subscribe for more content like this, um, and make sure you share with a friend. I'm your boy Queso, and I will see you in the next video. Chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets.